Okay, so in order to understand Bell's uh, experiment in Bell's inequalities, we have to understand the properties of entanglement a little more deeply. Let's go back and look at what we knew about the Bell state. From EPR, we knew that we can write the Bell state as either an equal superposition of 0, 0, and 1, 1, or as an equal superposition of plus, plus, and minus, minus. So now we are going to see that, in fact, this is part of a much more general property of, of Bell states, which is that we can write them in any rotated basis as u, u plus u perp, u perp. Okay, let's see what this means. Okay, so here's our, here's our basis 0, 1 for this, for this first qubit, ground and excited. And there's a similar basis 0, 1 for the second qubit, ground and excited. Now what we could do is we could rotate this basis by an arbitrary angle. And so we get some rotated bases like this. U, and then the state which we'll call U perp, it's orthogonal to U. So we just take this zero one basis and we rotate it by some angle theta. And similarly, we could look at the U, U perp basis for, for the second qubit. Okay, so now what we are saying is if you were to write each of these qubits in the basis U, U perp, and now if you were to, if you were to express the Bell state in this U, U perp basis, what you get is that the Bell state can be written as an equal superposition of 0, 0, and 1, 1, or as an equal superposition of u, u, u perp, u perp. Well, what it means is that if you were to measure the first qubit in this u, u perp basis, the probability that the outcome is u is exactly a half, but if you were to see the outcome as u, then a measurement of the second qubit will definitely also yield the outcome u if you measure again in u, the u-u per basis. So it doesn't matter which rotated basis you measure in, you'll always get the same result for both the qubits if they are entangled. Okay, so now let's look at a slightly different scenario with these two qubits. Okay, so same thing as before. We have the zero one basis for the first qubit, the u u perp basis. And now let's look at, for the second qubit, let's measure it in the v, v perp basis for some different basis, uh, v, v, perp. What we want to know is, if we measure the first qubit in the u, u, perp basis and measure the second qubit in the v, v, perp basis, what's the chance that we get matching out outcomes? That if we see the outcome of the first measurement to be u, what's the chance that we get v as the outcome of the second measurement? So what's the chance that we get these possibilities? or if we got u perp here, that, that we got v perp there. So we can answer that based on the rotational invariance of the Bell state. So the way we do that is to understand this fact, that when we measure the first qubit, if the outcome happened to be u, then the new state of the system is u, u which means that the new state here is that. Now let's imagine that this angle between u and v is theta. So now, when we measure this, the second qubit in the v, v per basis, the probability that we see v is now going to be cosine squared theta.
the same holds if if the outcome of the of the first uh, measurement was u perp. So in this case, the new state would have been u perp u perp, meaning that's what the second cube. That's the state of the second qubit. This angle is also theta. So in this case, the probability that we see v perp as the answer to our measurement would have been, again, cosine squared theta. So here's the new principle that we've derived. What we've derived is that if we measure the two qubits in two different bases, which make an angle theta with each other, the probability that we, we get corresponding outcomes on the two measurements is exactly cosine squared theta. And so the probability that we get not matching outcomes, so we get u and v perp, or u perp and v, is sine squared theta. So let's go ahead and prove this. So how do we establish that the, the rotational invariance? Okay, so, so here's 0, 1, that's u, u perp. Now suppose u was a0 plus b1. So if you were to draw it, this is a, that is b. So when you, when you rotate it through 90 degrees, that would be a, and this intercept would be minus b. So, so u perp is equal to minus b0 plus a1. And so let's, let's write down what's uh, 1 over square root 2 times So 1 over square root 2 times u u plus u perp u perp is equal to so which is now substituting u and and v uh, and u perp we get it's 1 over square root 2 times a0 plus b1 times a0 plus b1 plus minus b0 plus a1 times minus b0 plus a1. And now what we want to do is collect terms. So what's the amplitude of 0, 0? Well, you get a squared, and then you get, you get from here minus b times minus b, which is b squared. And similarly, for 1, 1, you get b squared, b times b from here, and a times a from here. So you get a squared plus b squared times 1, 1. And, and now notice that everything else cancels. So for 0, 1, you have a, b, and, and out here you have 0, 1 minus a, b. And for 1, 0, you have a, b, a, and then minus a, b. So, so it all cancels. But now remember that our state is normalized which means that a squared plus b squared is equal to 1. And so this is just 1 over square root 2 times 0, 0 plus 1, 1, as promised. Now, one thing I should say is that, um, uh, I should caution you about, is that um, this state, 0, 0 plus 1, 1, is rotationally invariant with respect to real rotations. So A and B have to be real here for this uh, rotational invariance to work. If you wish to actually have a state that's um, invariant under all complex rotations, then you have to go to a different Bell state, which is called psi minus. And that's 1 over square root 2, 0, 1, minus 1 over square root 2, 1, 0.